Good afternoon, how is everybody doing? So I'm now reporting in from the beautiful state of Kansas. Wait, is this Kansas? It looks a lot more like uh, Utah to me. I'm just, uh, I'm going out this uh, this long, slow crawl on uh, the Mexican mountain road, and uh, I should probably air down my tires. It's a bit of a chore, but I should just get out and do it. All right, I'll do it. I guess that's it. Google Maps shows the road goes at least a, another mile, if not further, but there's a washout and a gate. So that is it. But yeah, airing down the tires is definitely worth doing. Makes a huge difference. But yeah, I got a gate here. No drones. This is a Mexican mountain wilderness. That's Mexican mountain up there. Not sure if you can scramble to the top of it. I'm guessing it's a climb. But yeah, no bikes. No nothing beyond this point unless you got a horse. If I could fit a horse in there then we'd be all set. But yeah, I'll just go back, find a place to park and spend the night. And uh, that'll be my evening. Well, this is how painfully antisocial I am. Even though I'm way out in the middle of nowhere, I wasn't comfortable parking in that lot. At the end of the road where there was like a 2% chance that someone may show up. No, instead I had to come find a secluded spot here. <laughs> off in the middle of nowhere. In my defense though, this is a really nice spot. There's a big drop off here. I gotta be careful where I step. Down into uh, the Slot Canyon. That's the uh, San Rafael River that's carving that out. Oh, this is an impressive spot. This is also not British Columbia where you can just walk into the bush and come out with some firewood. People would be understandably upset if I started cutting down these nice juniper trees. But the downside to buying firewood is that I have to cut it into thirds to fit into my uh, cubic mini wood stove. And I still have not developed a safe method of doing this. If I had some kind of uh, clamp that mounted on the van, I'm sure that would be a good way. But yeah, I can't show how I do this on camera. I can feel the criticism and it's totally worthy of it. So I'm just going to go about my work and hopefully I don't cut off my foot because this is not a good, good place to do that, so wish me luck. Another downside to buying firewood is uh, buying firewood. But I'd much rather use the wood stove than the diesel heater, especially because I don't know how long I'll stay out here and I should try to conserve electricity.
it should be enough to last me at least three nights. We did not sleep good last night. There was a catch to that amazing camp spot in paradise. There were mice coming in the van all night long. Getting Rocco all stirred up. She was jumping up on the counter trying to catch them. Today I don't have a goal post on this hike like I normally do. Just hiking for the sake of hiking. I've never been in this area before. You don't really need a goal post in Utah. Just go out there with your head on a swivel. Soak it all in. You can't go wrong. I've had this idea though for a project for over a year to uh, build a hiking route that does a complete perimeter around the San Rafael Swell and I just need to get out there and test all these pinch points to see if it'll actually work. So there is an old airstrip here that looks like uh, it's still in use. You can see some signs of tire tracks on it and a sign with the history. I was wondering if there's a way up and out of here and it kind of confirms it that there's this horse thief pass trail, not only used by the ancients, but also more recently to transport stolen horses by like Butch Cassidy. And it says this uh, airstrip was built in 1975. They're looking for oil out here about 50 years ago. I think it might be up through there. I can try it out, see if it works. Like on this whole big cliff wall, there's only one tiny way to get through and people did manage to find it. So maybe I can too. Actually, I changed my mind. I think it might be this one on the left, so I'll try for it. Since I can't fly a drone here, it's up to me to climb something, get a viewpoint. Oh, what do you know? There's a clearly marked route through here. We're following through the footsteps of history. <laughs> Isn't this fun? I think the official pass is up over there where people go, but I'm going to continue this way and see if I can meet up with a point that I hiked to last year when I was here. So last year I hiked up through that canyon, which was incredible. 
and I reached this viewpoint of Mexican Mountain. So now I know it all connects up. I can get down to the San Rafael River from here. So there's a tiny little portion of this uh, route that I've been imagining put together. But that's all I can do for today. It's uh, time to head back to the van and get some dinner. So this morning I'm going to hike out the same direction as yesterday, but instead of going up over Horse Thief Pass, I'm going to hang a left into Nate's Canyon and see if there's a route connection in there that leads to the west. The last winter in the States, it seemed like uh, everything was so straightforward, just like boom, 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 boom. This year, it's been totally different. It's like, I feel like I'm driving around aimlessly with my head cut off. So just stay in one spot and explore all these nooks and crannies and work on a project. Feels like the right thing to do. Oh, well, here we are at the uh, entrance to Nate's Canyon. Looks like we got a plaque with some history on it. Let's check that out. So it sounds like there was a, a gun battle further down here in Spring Canyon. This uh, sheriff was wounded by some outlaws and he had to survive two nights alone before he was rescued. I think this is the general area where the gun battle unfolded. You see it in the movies, but this is a real world location of uh, an event in the Wild West. I'm gonna continue another, uh, maybe two kilometers up this canyon. So as far as I need to look today, we'll turn on back to the van. I didn't talk much in the last video, so I guess I gotta catch up on this one, but I really like that format of just uh, quietly sharing an experience, and it's more about like trying to capture the mood of it all. When I'm out hiking alone like this, I uh, play brain games with myself. I picture an actor uh, who I should be able to remember their name, but I can't. I've just been stumped on this one. This uh, I think he's from Mexico, this big, strong guy covered in tattoos. He's got this really mean looking face. I think he was in uh, a Tarantino movie. 
and also an appearance in uh, Breaking Bad. I should know this, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Well, this is not looking too promising. It appears I'm walking into this huge horseshoe shaped cliff wall. This could be the world's first long distance hiking route with base jumping involved. Just gonna keep walking up here and investigate a little further. Well, it's, uh, it's a beautiful area, but it is a dead end. No way to get through this. Back to the drawing board. This could uh, very well be a lifetime project, and that's as far as I can go today. Gotta head on back to the van. I will see you there. So I've used 110 amp hours since parking out here. It would have been the air fryer that used up most of that. But overnight in the morning, I'll use the, the diesel heater and also the induction to make coffee. So I'll be up over 120 amp hour by the morning. And with my 60 amp charger, that'll be uh, about two hours of driving. So I'll probably get going. I could use some groceries and most importantly, some beer. But I probably could have set out my solar panel when I was out hiking and that might have helped to stretch me out a bit further, but it is what it is. So uh, yeah, I think I'll wrap up this episode here, eat my dinner, and uh, I will see you guys later in the next episode. So thanks for watching and thank you to Patreon supporters. And I will see you soon. Danny Trio. Got it. Very good actor.